What is up, everyone? I'm Jeff Lund. This is the Mediocre Alaskan Podcast, episode 151, coming to you from day two of quarantine. I'm back in Alaska after a nice summer down in Laramie. It was a different summer in that, uh, well, actually, it wasn't all that different because we spent a lot of time outside uh, hiking, fishing, and, and camping and doing all that sort of stuff. So there really wasn't much contact with people, but there wasn't any contact with people last summer either. So uh, Abby had a nice farm or a nice uh, garden, so we were getting our greens from there and then still eating on her elk from last year. So, um, yeah, n- no social activity, which is which is pretty sweet. But uh, Ketchikan is, or Alaska, is uh, doing testing, and, and Ketchikan has people at the airport who are doing tests for people who get back into town. If you are, like, coming up here to visit then and you show proof of a negative test within the last 74, 72 hours, then uh, you don't have to test, but uh, yeah, I tested you for free here. I tested me for free at the uh, at the airport, and then uh, I got to test again. If I test negative, which uh, hopefully they'll let me know soon, because man, I'm I'm sitting at home and I'm just waiting and waiting. Feel great, but man, it's torture. Even though it's been kind of rainy, it's been torture to to be home and not be able to check my game cams or not be able to fish or or launch my boat. I uh, I probably could. But, you know, being that it is an island, you know, you don't want that uh, to get around. And we have 40-some cases now. And I just want to make sure I, I do things right. I could, uh, if, if someone sees me, like, walking around, like, uh, he just got back into town, man. And he's walking around. And so is he really taking it seriously? So I just kind of want to do what I'm supposed to do here and sacrifice a couple days waiting for my test just to make sure. And then, uh, uh they get, I got a voucher for a second test. So even if my first test is negative, they want me to take a second test. Uh, and it's free. Uh, apparently because uh, at five days out, um, like half of the cases are showing symptoms. But uh, at day 10, like 90 to 95% of the cases will show up. So if I test negative, but I picked it up in the airport, I might not have like the virus might not be viable in me yet until like day three or four afterwards so i may have tested negative but then four days later i have symptoms so i could still spread it even though i initially test negative so that's why the second test is going on so um i know there's a big huge controversy with uh whether or not it's it's a real virus or it's hysteria or whether or not masks work but um i think the alternative of giving the government permission to shut things down and lock down is way worse than wearing a mask. So the the argument of masks are tyranny, eh, I think the alternative of them uh, uh, trying to shut stuff down would be uh, a worse. So you know, when it comes to a mask, hey, man, I could do the mask because it might work. It might just work. So even if it helps a little bit, you know, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do this little thing here. I'll, uh, I'll do this. Because if everybody did that, we wouldn't. They wouldn't have an excuse to to close things down. So, anyway, why are we why are we arguing about masks? It's masks, masks. Uh, so episode uh, one fifty one here, solo episode. I try to keep these short, uh, just because I don't want to ramble on too much. I try to keep them around uh, ten to twelve minutes. Uh, when I started this, the the purpose was to create something and, and not be afraid of uh, documenting the journey. You know, from um, and, and present the failures and setbacks and, and th- things that you know, pretend like they don't happen. So, you know, the podcast, some of them are really good, some of them not quite as good. But I want to make sure I, I kept kept going. I think that's the main thing. When I started off, people were talking about or the podcast advice, like your one hundredth podcast is going to be way better than your first one. So you have to get there. That's the same thing with writing. You know, you get better and better at writing the more the more that you do. Um. When I uh, kind of had that life reboot in 2013 when I moved back to Alaska, my dad had passed away and mom had uh, brain aneurysm, so I came back to, to take after her and, and help her out, even though she ended up being fine. Um, I self-published a book, and I look back on that now, and I'm like, man, I should have waited because I'd only been writing a column for a couple of years. I had a journalism background, but, you know, again, the, the more you write, the better you get. So I look back at that now, and I think, man, yeah, that was a, a that better. I have a better story now. You know, I could write it better, and that that just comes with seven years of writing experience. 
After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. For anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. I was hesitant about having to get a new phone and a new phone number, but with Mint, you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone and your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or for a family, and at Mint, families start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and to get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash waypoint. That is mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. So if I were to have written that now, I think it would have been better. There are times I look back at it and I, I, I think, yeah, it's not bad. That's that's uh, that's that's not bad. And other times I, I read certain parts of it and think, gosh, dang it! They just open up to a random page. I'm like, dude, dude, really? There's you could have articulated that self you, yourself so much more. Um, but you know that just comes with experience. And so I wanted to continue to do this and and keep doing the podcast to get better at the podcast. To make sure I'm putting out uh, some sort of product. Um, and there there's the there's the temptation to keep things secret. You know, just in case they don't work out. Um, you know, if, if, if we, if we let people know what we're doing, um, sometimes it can be kind of scary, you know, we don't really want to advertise our failures, but, uh, I'm not sure that's the, that's the right thing to do. I think at some point you got to let people know that things are going on, not to like brag, but just as maybe a level of accountability. And I think it depends on who you're hanging out with too. Um, I had a buddy that was trying out for Blue Man Group when I lived in California and. I was like, dude, go for it. And he had he had a friend of his that said, yeah, you should probably give up because he didn't make it once. And he was told to give up. Like, dude, what are you doing? Like, what type of influence is that? So thankfully, I, I have some good friends who are entrepreneur types who are just all about it, you know, and, and they, they're they not shy about articulating their failures. And it's in a different realm, but it's still that that's part of it, you know. Um, you want to be around those people who move and create Right, and then you want to be influenced by them, and because uh, that's people who do that and battle that are the ones who who battle their insecurities. You know, I, I I'm really insecure at times about uh, some of the columns I write and podcasts I do because I just think, in comparison, it's just not nearly as good as it could be. Or, you know, you read a, um, you know, some some column from say, a Bill Heavey column or Patrick McManus, like that's brilliant. It's so good. I have nothing like that. Or you listen to a, a really good podcast or just like when you listen to Joe Rogan and the way he interviews people and how quick he is with the questions. He calls himself a dummy, but he's so good at asking questions. Um, it just that it's like a journalistic ethic, but he doesn't have a journalistic background. He's just genuinely interested and asks these great questions. And so you think, man, I wish I had a podcast that was you know, he's been doing tons of podcasts, you know, and he's, he, but you just learn from those sort of things. And that's what, you know, you can't compare yourself, like the amount of people who, you know, listen to his seven minutes of ads are way more than I'll probably ever have listeners. You know, the people, most of us, I fast forward through all the ads, uh, but some people listen to all of it. And so like, if you look at comparison, he's got millions of people who listen to it and I'm not even close, but you know, you can learn from some stuff, you know, and, and, you know, he's had some, he started off and it was, it was clunky and it was weird, but, you know, he just got better with time. And that's, that's the way everything is, you know, and I'm definitely not saying that I'll ever be at that level. Of course not, never, but, you know, just the idea with it, whatever my context is uh, going forward and keep creating. I think that's the, that's the point, you know, and uh, self-esteem and, and happiness comes from that sort of growth. And, 
you know, if you, you just gotta, gotta keep after it. You gotta, you gotta stay with it. You know, keep growing and, um, telling stories about missing deer or having bow hunts, uh, that, that don't go well or rifle hunts that don't go well or failing at whatever, man, that's part of it. So that's kind of been the goal to, to keep creating, keep getting after it. And, uh, even though it's a, a short little podcast, gotta, gotta, gotta keep moving. So got, uh, the deer season starting up. Hopefully I get my test results within the next, uh, day or two. Uh, hopefully they're negative obviously. And then, uh, uh, get ready for that opening opening day. It's uh, supposed to be rainy, about a half inch on opening day, and so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But uh, I definitely want to get on a mountain, whether or not I go to the top. Who knows? There have been a couple times where I've been up on mountains and the clouds have kind of gone in and out, and so you're able to make a stock. But that's not when it's been really rainy and socked in, so we'll see what it is, uh, what it's looking like going forward. Um Actually, the last two years near opening day, I've hiked up with people in the rain. And then once it broke, uh, deer were really popping out. But it doesn't look like the weather is going to necessarily break. On both of those days, it was morning rain and then uh, um, partly cloudy in the afternoon. So there was definitely the weather was over and you're expecting at least some measure of, of, of sunny skies. And so it definitely was going to be raining. So this year's forecast looks a little bit different. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to hike up a mountain in the rain, be totally soaking wet, set up my camp and soaking wet, and then never even really get a chance to, to hunt because it's, it's rainy and it's blowing, it's gross. So uh, I'll be prepared to, to do that if need be, but I just want to watch the weather and um, be on, on some part of the mountain and some of the lower areas, maybe the, the, the higher muskegs, the lower alpine, maybe if that's clear, but, uh, definitely don't want to just sit it out and wait for a nicer day because, you know, there's going to be some sort of misery and I got a new, uh, I got a new j- rain jacket, which I'm pretty excited about. So I'll put that to the test, but you know, get out, uh, get out there on the mountain. Um, I've imagined opening day, but every time that I imagine it, it involves sunny skies. So I got really got to adjust that in my brain and get prepared for the wetness. So, but uh, yeah, like I said, I really like to go check the game camps. I got a couple that are that are pretty low on low musk eggs in areas that look like um, deer might not migrate out of. I don't, you know, deer migrations for down south hunting. And they talk a lot about your your summer territory and then they, when they migrate down, same thing with elk. But, you know, there are certain areas of Prince of Wales and, and Revilla around here where, you know, people are driving around on boats and skiffs and they see nice, uh, nice bucks, nice four points on the shore. You know, just because there's alpine and that's the most fun place to hunt them doesn't mean they have to be there necessarily. So there's always a couple cases of people getting nice bucks down low. Um, so those muskeg areas that you look at for rut, you know, yeah, that's typically where to find them. We're in those edges around the musk eggs during the rut. But, you know, there's, in certain cases, if, if, if a deer's got all the cover and all the food and everything that it needs, you know, why would it go up the mountain? It doesn't necessarily have to go up the mountain. So I'll be on the, on the lookout maybe as a contingency plan or a plan B to, uh, to hunt a little bit lower. And I'm excited to go check out some of my game cams because one's in a transition type area. And then um, another one is is definitely in a in a rut type muskeg area, but I'm wondering if something is is still hanging out low. So I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, it's nice to be back in Alaska, where you know you're not locked inside just looking at uh, Twitter trying to figure out uh, what exactly is going on in Portland, it's or or Seattle. It's 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 absolutely crazy to look at Twitter. And to think that you know what's going on, it's way too complex for that. The pe- the people, the propagandists who know that you will be influenced by one thing or another uh, know that, that just the right clip is going to get people on your side. So I've fallen into that, man. I had a couple tweets or I retweeted things that had, you know, just it was amazing things to look at. But, uh, you know, you definitely think, oh, this this. This definitely looks like it might be from this sort of perspective, so I'm not going to assume that this is the entire story because that would be ridiculous and uh, and stupid and narrow-minded. 
and simplistic and cartoonish to uh, to think that this one video encapsulates everything that's going on there. I'm assuming that people are trying to manipulate me, and if you assume that people are going to try to manipulate you, then you can kind of your head on, uh, head screwed on a little bit better. But um, you know, as it is here, there's so many distractions. It's nice to re live a real life. And then if you are refreshed by what you do in your real life, then it can help how you interact with real life people rather than just the people that you are uh, uh, seeing online and social media. So um, I think that reality is important to get into. And I think the mountains and your area that you live in is a lot more real than whatever it is that you're finding on social media. So I'm really happy to be back here, excited for Abby to get up here and hopefully there's a weather break for uh, our mountain goat hunt. Um, but, um, yeah, see how it happens. You know, whatever it is, either way, you got to make do, you got to figure it out and you got to get after it. That's, uh, that's why you live here. That's why you live here. So call that episode 151 again. Uh, really appreciate you, uh, listening. Appreciate the support. Uh, make sure you check out the media Alaskan.com for content, the column from, uh, for sit news and columns for general empire. And, uh, we'll talk to you next time.